Bonjour, mes amis. Do you know how we can make this amazing vehicle even better? Why, we can make it more French, of course. Vive la France! On y va! Yes, apologies to French people for that. Gentlemen, today and ladies, um, do I have a video for you, okay? I'm really excited about this one because I've been working on this for a long time, okay? So I hope you'll be able to come along with me today and learn something as well. And if you do learn something, something you don't know about, just give me a like down in the bottom there and let me know that you enjoy this because um, I put a lot of work into this and I'm quite pleased with what I'm gonna show you. And I'm hoping um, it's something new to a lot of you as well and, and writes a bit of history about the World War II Jeep you may not be aware of, okay? So I was reading um, in an Army Motors thing and it, it mentions that late in the war, they were going to fit some of the World War II Jeeps with a French carburetor, the Solex. Now that's interesting. We know at the end of the war, the Jeeps that had come across to do the invasion of uh, Europe, um, they were starting to get worn out, of course. You know, they only needed a year heavy fighting getting thrown around before they were pretty much knackered and they needed to be rebuilt. And obviously, you're not going to send them back to America to rebuild them. You're going to rebuild them on the continent where you are. Use what's available to you um, to reproduce these Jeeps. And that's what they did. They started to rebuild them, okay? Now, the, one of the things they had a problem with was the lack of WO carburetors for these things, okay? Um, they couldn't get them over or what have you, so they had to make use of something else was, which was there. And this is what this little piece of information says. It says that they were going to use Solex carburetors, okay? And a lot of these Jeeps which were being rebuilt in Europe would end up over in the Pacific theatre as well. So it said, look out for these sort of things. Now, obviously, in 1944 and early 1945, the Americans didn't know uh, the war was going to shortly end. They thought, some of them thought they were halfway through the war. They didn't know anything about the Manhattan Project um, or what was going to occur, of course. So these Jeeps needed to be kept running and they weren't going to send them back for rebuild. So the Solex carburetor was mentioned and we all know about the Solex carburetor. Here it is, the uh, 32 PBIC. This is the post-war carburetor you guys all know all about. Here it is. It's got a little accelerator pump on him and everything like that. But these weren't fitted to World War II Jeeps, were they? Everyone knows these were fitted to the French M201 post-war Jeeps. No one knows about the uh, World War II Solex carburetor. So just what the hell was fitted to the World War II Jeep? Were any carburetors of Solex ever fitted to them? Would it be correct for a late war, really late war, we're talking here, 1944, 1945 Jeep to have a French carburetor on it? So I got thinking, I got thinking, and that's a dangerous thing when I start thinking. It's also an expensive thing when I start thinking. And I started to find some information. So I got digging Jeep peeps and what did I find? Well, I found the first piece of information to help us with our little puzzle here. Excuse my uh, uncut hair and everything like that. I know it's not very fitting for World War II, but I can't get it cut at the moment, of course, due to lockdown. Anyway, um, here it is. This is the per first piece of information that I'll flash up for you. This is a English document and it talks about the 32 AIC carburetor being fitted to Jeeps. It uh, doesn't talk about the 32 PBIC, which we know was fitted to the Jeeps post-war. It talks about the 32 AIC and it gives the information about it. It gives uh, the names and how you can, the stop number for it and things like that. It gives a diagram as well, which is really useful, showing an accelerator vacuum pump, which is something we'll look at. And it also gives all the jets and things like that. So that's a really, that's a strong piece of information there about there being a different carburetor fitted to the World War II Jeep, but, or the World War II style Jeep, but the date is the 3rd of December, 1946. It's too late for us. This is, you know, this could have been used in World War II, but the date doesn't allow us to really pinpoint it as being used in World War II. So it's also English as well. So we can't really say that they did fit it um, during the war. So close, but no cigar. So time went on and I carried on looking into this thing and see if I could find any more information. And guess what? Lo and behold, I did find some information from France, okay? And here it is. Now, this is really getting into the puzzle here. I'll flash this up for you as well. Look at this. Uh, Carburetta Solex, Jeep, Motor, Willys or Ford, it says at the top there. 11th of the 6th, 1946. 11th of June, 1946. Yeah, this is interesting. It's all in French, so it's not in... Um, uh, I was going to say not in American there. Not... <laughs> You know what I mean, gents? Uh, not in English, okay? And he gives a clear picture of the 32 AIC carburetor. You can see it doesn't have the mechanical accelerator pump linkage on it. This is a different carburetor to our 32 PBIC here. That is not the same carburetor. Um, and you can see it's clearly fitted to a Jeep there with the air horn. You can see the bonding straps and you can see the manifold and the PCV valve and things like that. That is definitely fitted to a real World War II Jeep there, but it's 1946. It's a uh, there's some strange noises going on around here. And on the back, here we find some even more interesting information, okay? You can see I'm pleased about this. This is, this is cool stuff. 
So there's three types of carburetor you could fit to the Jeep. There's the economy version, the 32 AIC without pump. So without an accelerator pump, uh, there's the power version, the puissance version, 32 AIC with the pump. So the accelerator pump, that's the one on the picture on the front. And then there's a different one there. So with uh, uh, speed, uh, speed limited or speed governed. So what vitesse limite, so uh, speed governed. Uh, 30 RFAI, so that's a completely different carburetor, that isn't this carburetor, and that seems to be a governed carburetor, okay, so perhaps for use on generators or something like that, I'm not entirely sure about that one, I haven't looked into that one, but there's three carburetors there, one with a pump, the uh, power version, and one without the pump, the economy version, okay, so pretty interesting stuff, but the date, 1946 still, we're not getting there, we're not getting there. It's really uncomfortable here. I'm kneeling half on the Jeep to keep out of this really strong wind uh, up a hill. It's really uncomfortable. Anyway, now here comes the real, the real bit. Here comes a piece de resistance as they... <laughs> I'm really sorry, French people. As they say in France, it's a French, we're playing with French stuff here. Um, okay, here it is. Here it is. Are you ready? Da 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 da. <laughs> Solex Jeeps, 32 AIC, poor Jeep, quarter ton, four by four, Willys Overland, and four GPW. Look at this. And then what does it say at the bottom? Ready? Janvier, 1945, January 1945. And the picture is of a 32 AIC with the uh, accelerator pump fitted to a Jeep. You can see all the details in that picture. This is it. And then if we go into him, oh, I've got another one here. Here's a, uh, this is the uh, civilian version. Um, Let's go into it. This is the real thing, gents. This is not, this is not a drill. Look at this in English and in French. So this is for the, um, well, I suppose it's for GI consumption. You know, they get given this uh, little manual here and it tells them what to do and it explains it all. Ta-da! With pictures and everything. Um, so it's all translated. It tells you how to start it from hot, how to start it from cold and things like that. And it's in January, 1945. And it tells you about, um, Problems as well, um, interestingly. <laughs> so I've just looked on the back. The problems with it are all written in French, so that's not particularly helpful, is it? They didn't bother to translate that into uh, English there. But this is it, January 1945, 32 AIC, fitted to a World War II Jeep in English for GIs to consume so they could understand how to use this carburetor. So out there, one of the rarest, rarest World War II Jeep accessories is the 32 AIC carburetor. Um, you know, if you want a late war Jeep, which has been rebuilt um, on the continent after being in Europe, after fighting through D-Day and things like that, this would be the thing to have. Now, who would possibly, <laughs> who would possibly get hold of one of those? I mean, this thing's got to be rare as hen's teeth, right? You know, I've never seen one before or anything like that. So which sort of person would get hold of something like that? I don't know, maybe, maybe me. <laughs> Here it is. This is the 32 AIC. Now, first of all, thanks to Emil, who um, hooked me up with this. This is a YouTube, uh, one of my YouTube viewers, and he had this and he uh, sold it to me very kindly as well. So thank you, Emil, to uh, give this to me so I can show you it. Um, we can share the information. But this is the real Jeep 32 AIC. Now, this one I've rebuilt and polished up and things like that. It's got um, later bits on it here because the ones off it were damaged and what have you. But you can see, this type here, this is the this is the economy version. It doesn't have that accelerator pump on it. It's it's the uh, not the puissance version, the power version. It's only the economy version. And now, economy and Jeeps don't really go together. If we want to compare it to a WO carburetor and see how it behaves, I mean, it's not really a fair cons comparison, is it? Using an economy version with the older uh, grunty WO. So this is very very cool. Um, we will try it. Um, but this is not the power version, okay? And this is not a fair comparison with the WO, I think. So, but unfortunately, you know, getting hold of that um, other version, getting hold of the power version is going to be nigh on impossible. I mean, where the hell are you going to get something like that? This really is the worst filming location ever. I've got to really crouch down here to keep out the wind and everything. Someone's taken where I wanted to uh, park up. Anyway, yeah, the economy version is pretty cool. The power version would be really cool. Then we could really see what it was like. But um, where would you find something like that? Oh, I don't know. Fitted to my Jeep, perhaps? Yes, the 32 AIC power version. This is the real deal in there. That is a, this one, I didn't want to rebuild and use. I must admit, I wanted to keep this original and not touch it. And I've rebuilt it in such a way that it, it maintains its originality. I haven't cleaned it up on the outside and things like that, okay. Um, but this is it. This is the real, this, everything about it is 
completely correct. Um, it's removed off a Jeep. I can see marks on it um, underneath it where the um, gasket goes. There are little staples and you can see where they've rubbed on the, the base of this, the flange. So this is the real thing off a World War II Jeep in Europe, uh, rebuilt, okay, um, so by the French to use, you know, to, to head across and what have you. But that's it. And you can see it's on there and it's been running because we're halfway up a hill here. So it must it must work. So um, let's have a look at the first start of this then after I uh, rebuilt this and put this on here. Oh, oh she's going. Actually, oh, ho, ho, ho. look at that. Yes, running on the enrichment device. Oh, ho, ho, ho. awesome. I can see fuel coming out the main. Yeah, you can see it starts up absolutely fine straight away, of course. You know, I was, um, <laughs> I was very pleased when that happened, I must admit. It's a great carburetor. It seems to work really nicely. I've been driving it around and enjoying it. Um, it seems very similar to the WO. I would say it's more peppy than the WO. Um, not Pepe Le Pew. Uh, it's more Pepe and... <laughs> It seems to go, it seems to just have a little bit more pizzazz in it than the WO. The WO is a little bit more, it's more um, gentle with its power delivery and what have you, whereas this really roars at it and then it sort of dies off a little bit. So this is quite a little bit different in how it behaves. It's, um, it's smooth, not as smooth as the WO perhaps. It only has just been fitted, so it's still got to bed itself in a little bit. So maybe that's something to do with it. Um, but the starter on it is very good, the buy starter. Let's look at that then. Um, just want to say a big thanks to Hertian who helped me uh, get hold of this carburetor. I bought it from Germany. The guy in Germany wouldn't sell it to me um, in the UK, so I contacted Hertian and asked him if he could buy it in the Netherlands and then post it to me and he did and he also sent me this shirt from his Jeep which I appreciate so thanks a lot Hertian I really appreciate you helping me out with this to get hold of this rare carburetor so that we can have a look at it and all enjoy it together so really good thanks uh, thanks for my YouTubers you know supporting me with this it's it's much appreciated gents so um, and ladies as well of course so good work everyone <laughs> Okay, let's get into the nitty gritty of my little friend here then. I'm very happy with how it behaves. It behaves like, you know, everything you'd want to. It starts, it stops, it goes. It seems to have power. It doesn't bog or anything like that. So it's, it's impressive, okay? So that's really good about it. It's more simple than a WO carburetor. The uh, AIC carburetor, all it has is a throttle butterfly. Look at that. It's not connected to anything. It's simply, that's when you move it, it moves a throttle butterfly. It doesn't move accelerator pumps. It doesn't move linkages. It doesn't do anything like that, like the WO does. So it's much more simple. This uses air pressure for the accelerator pump. Obviously this is the one without the accelerator pump. It uses air pressure. It uses um, the uh, depression, or should I say the vacuum in the inlet manifold to um, squirt fuel in there when you accelerate. This one doesn't, that one does. Um, so it's a different concept and it works very well apparently. I don't notice anything um, lacking with it at all, which is really, really good. I was surprised by that. I thought it might be a bit weak or something, but no, it seems to work really nicely. The other thing about the Solex, which is different, is they use a thing called a by starter. So for choking it, rather than using a choke, a, a flap in the top of, you know, on the WO, you have a flap in the top of it and you reduce the amount of air supply when you want to enrich in the mixture. This has a separate carburetor attached to it. These are two carburetors in one. And here it is, it's called a by starter. And it takes its air in the top there. It doesn't take it uh, through the center takes its air in the top there it mixes it with fuel with a little disc and you have a you have a lever to move it on little detents to move it to semi rich and mega rich so this is when you when it's really 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 cold and this is when it's mostly cold but usually you can start it around there but that works really well okay um, and it lets the fuel out in a separate port out the bottom there so two carburetors in one quite different it is different to the 32 pbic okay the 32 pbic is a later better development of it it's got things which make it more suitable to using in a jeep the 32 aic has things like this it has open holes in the top of it there for the uh, by starters that's where it takes its air in there that's unfiltered air that sits on the back so any crud which gets blown around in this um, engine bay or any crud or oil or dirt which falls in there it'll go straight in the hole and it'll block it up causing you start uh, difficulties with starting same here you can see this little hole here this is a, um, a breather for the fuel bowl there's another breather here they're completely open out into the elements and they suck air in whereas on the 32 pbic they took all in this into account this is all within the center here with the filtered air through the air horn so you can see we've got the breather for the float chamber that's where the air that's where the air goes in 
can you see that? Yeah, that's where the air goes in for the by starter. You can see it comes in there rather than through the top. Um, so overall, it's dust proof. Um, as opposed to the 32 AIC, which is not dust proof. And that's because this is a civilian carburetor. It was uh, originally used in the 30s for civilian vehicles, not designed specifically for use with Jeeps, which is why the WO is a better military carburetor because it is self-contained. It only takes in the air. The cleaned air goes through the carburetor rather than this dirty, dusty, cruddy air coming in everywhere. But, you know, they had to do what they had to do. Solex had it, it was off the shelf. They said, what can you do? They said, here it is, we've got this. And, you know, they fitted it and on it went. And as they found that it needed improvements, they improved it with the 32 PBIC, which is great. And this is more of a military carburetor, but uses a mechanical accelerator pump. This uses the vacuum pump. So very different. Now, should we do something interesting? Should we put on the version, the economy version, and see how that goes? The uh, version with the power works really nicely. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I'm, I'm very pleased with that. But I wonder what the hell this behaves like. I mean, it doesn't have an accelerator pump. Is it just going to bog down and die each time? It's, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens here. Right, let's whip it this off. <laughs> ah, yes. See that fuel pulsing away in there on the starter. Should we give her a bit of power and see what happens without the accelerator pump, okay? Still working on the starting device, but we'll try it anyway. <laughs> I can see fuel coming out. It doesn't seem to be dying or anything like that. What? It's behaving like it has an accelerator pump. That's kind of weird. Oh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> what? I do not get this at all. It seems to work fine. Bizarre. Pretty good, pretty good. Right, do you want to see what this thing's like? See if you can notice it hasn't got an accelerator pump. <laughs> the back just slid out there. <laughs> Accelerating away from that bridge. I mean, Can you notice any difference? Because I can't. Obviously, it's got a little bit less power than the WO and the uh, Solex with the the bigger, the big boy Solex. But otherwise, you can't notice anything. It just, oh, there you go. Aha, it says I. That was second and I really mashed down the throttle there. So obviously the accelerator pump does <laughs> have a little bit of a, um, you know, you do need it in a specific regime there where you're in second low like this and you suddenly mash it down. Obviously it could, uh, the accelerator pump would help it out there, but apparently, yeah, see? Okay, so we found a bit where the accelerator pump would help. That's weird, isn't it? So you've got to, you've got to try these things out. Look, let's just do a normal acceleration. Okay then, peeps, what's the take home from this crazy carburetor journey then? Well, they work really well, you know, this, um, these Solexes are very good carburetors. Um, I'm very pleased of how they've worked out. Obviously they're extremely rare. Getting them to work in the first place was a bit of a, uh, a job. So doing that was uh, a bit of hard work. So I'm pleased with that. The economy version works really nicely. You can't tell it's an economy version really. Um, you can only notice when you're going in second and you're going slower in second than you should be, you know, going like 10 miles an hour in second and you mash that throttle down, it will die and then pick up, which is, you know, hardly surprising. This one as well, if you're stationary and you mash the throttle down um, that also will die a little bit and then pick up the WO doesn't quite do that um, the WO uh, it sprays that fuel in there and off it goes you know you don't need to worry about that from a standing start then the power drops off and then picks up again whereas these if you don't mash the throttle you just push it down in a more gentle way you get a constant power output out of it so they're a little bit different but very very good you know I'm really surprised at how nicely the economy version works so unbelievable if you had one of these and you didn't know it was a uh, an economy version carburetor you wouldn't know uh, you wouldn't notice any difference whatsoever so how do i feel overall about them if we say the wo is a hundred percent of being a wo makes sense doesn't it hundred percent of carburetorousness um let's <laughs> let's say the economy version is 85% of a WO, 85% of a WO, it's, it's there, it feels exactly the same, just a little bit less, just a little bit more muted. 
The accelerated version of the Solex is 105 to 110% of a WO. A little bit more power occasionally, um, and generally overall behaved very, very well. The one thing that's better about them is the starter on them. The starter is better than the choking device on the WO. It seems to be a very good system, you know, having a completely separate carburetor on there, just made for starting, you know, specifically for doing that, works really well. So even if your idle circuit doesn't work, it doesn't matter because you're starting on a completely different carburetor stuck to the side of your other carburetor. So that's a really good system. But overall though, these, you know, the WO, is made to be a military carburetor. It's dust proof. These are not made to be a military carburetor. That came later with a 32 PBIC. So, you know, you can suck the dirty air into them. It could clog it up. You know, they're not built um, the way the WO is. So they're very good, but they improved on it later. But overall, really, really pleased, you know, to use these rare carburetors, things which haven't been used in God knows how many years, you know, to resurrect them and bring them back to life and show you I'm really happy with that. So I hope you are too, you know, like and subscribe, join me on Patreon and uh, we'll play with more stuff next time i'm going to keep this one in my uh, jeep i'm going to put this one back on and drive it for a long time i think so not swap back to the wo see how it really is you know give this old girl another lease of life so i think she deserves it for my late european theater jeep awesome see you next time